We have ourselves a special guest that we want to bring in. We we've uh, we've talked with him before. We've met up with him before, both in the Bay Area and down at Snapdragon Stadium. He is an Aztec legend for sure. So we want to play this little introduction for all you Aztec Nation who may not know who our special guest is. Check this out. Shifted out to leave the backfield empty. And they're going for Marshall Falls. He is open. Touchdown, San Diego State, 80 yards. Lowry going deep. Is he open? Darnay Scott. See you later. Lowry again deep for Scott. He has it. Lowry to the end zone. Touchdown. There he is. There he is. Uh, re ready or not, here we come. David Lowry, ladies and gentlemen, Aztec Nation number 11. Man, it's good to see you, David. How are you doing? I like the hat. Hey, thanks a lot. It's an old school mo disgruntled money. I don't think we're allowed to use that anymore at San Diego State, but oh well. How are you guys doing? Not good, bad, man. Thank you bad. for coming. Thank you for joining Absolutely. us. Yeah, it's a beautiful day up here in the Bay Area. I'm waiting for you guys to come up here this weekend. Yeah, I will definitely be there, man. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenging game against Cal. I know, boy, the last time we were there, that's when I ran into you <laughs> first. I'm not sure if you remember that. I'm not sure if you remember that, man. Ran into you and it was, dude, I seen your son walking there with the jersey, Lowry on the back. I was like, Lowry? Like, yeah. <laughs> he's, a like, senior, oh, dude. He, he's a senior in high school now. That's what's crazy about it. He, uh, oh, oh, man. His, uh, memories and Facebook came up with uh, him in that jersey when we were heading out to that game. And yeah, that's uh, it was a quite, a, was quite a bit ago. Man. Yeah. The last time we were up there. Now, I hope you enjoyed that clips, those few clips that I, I shared of, of your canon there. Yeah. Uh, brings no back some good memories. <laughs> Uh, and the you know, game wasn't as happy as those plays, but uh, that was a good time. Yeah, man, that's some of my uh, some of my best memories as a young man is going to the game, watching you guys play on Saturdays, man. I had a, a really good time watching you play, man. It's so good to have a chance to chat with you and, and talk about some of those fun times. Yeah, I appreciate it. Looking back at those uh, videos, uh, God, that was a long time ago. It was a lot less, uh, a lot less weight and a lot less gray hairs. But uh, time flies, <laughs> and I've been having fun. So uh, let's get it going. I was gonna say, man, you notice I didn't put any of the re really any of the BYU uh, plays, <laughs> none of the back and forth plays, man. But yep. seriously, when I think back on that game, I was there, and I was a little guy. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, that game was maybe the most explosive, one of the most explosive games that I've ever been to in any any football game. Let me switch it up back back over here how we were. I kind of like kind of liked it over here how we're probably everybody can see our faces here. Got my old helmet in the background. <laughs> when you, when you see all that scoring from from your days as a Aztec in the 90s and knowing the offense of, of what we're seeing nowadays, trying to get things fast paced, get going. I know it's very different. I know it's a very different offense from from what what you guys ran back in those days. But how, how good does that make you feel? How excited are you to know that they're trying to get back to that explosive style of play? I, I love it. I mean, I'm still, I think, uh, number six all time passing at San Diego State history after all these years. And I thought that would be a, a short lived experience in the top 10. But, you know, the offense they have, it's it's basically you come it comes down to the same uh, type of principles and theories that we had is you have to have the play. You have to have the uh, guys execute the play and you have to be ready to be on the line and change a play and see what they're doing. Um, and that's if you're going to go fast, then you have to be faster to make the decision and what their weakness is. And, you know, we are able to do that with, you know, the plays we had, and the players we had. Um, so I don't think there's a lot of difference in the offense. The offense is put it out there, make the decision, and be ready to go. Hmm. What do you think about the, that new offense, right, where, where you get you get not in the huddle at all. You're in your formation. You're looking over to the coaches, right? 
uh, would you have fared pretty well in, in, in those type of? I think it would have been much. I, I would have loved it. I've coached that a little <laughs> bit in high school, a little bit, and I ran that in high school. We actually ran a no huddle offense uh, a couple times in high school, just as before it was even even something. Um, and what it is 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 you're matching up against their weaknesses. So you're out there and you're looking across the field. The coaches uh, are upstairs looking down. They're like, all right, here's what we got to go. Here's what we got to see. So the quarterback has to be almost in the mind of the coach. So the coach is calling something. He has to be able to look at that defense and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to make this decision in, in one, two, three, go. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. You have to know your read. As soon as that ball snapped, uh, it's one, two, three, basically, and get rid of the ball. And it's a one read, maybe two read offense. Uh, and you're, you're basically thinking that you're going to, outsmart them by going fast and if, if mm -hmm. you can't do that then you can't run that offense mm -hmm. man, man how well, did it oh i'm sorry dude. Go ahead. <laughs> how no, did I it feel ahead. to uh kind of looking back and seeing the career a lot of those other guys on that offense had in the nfl like how does that feel kind of looking back that you were like the trigger man for such a great offense man uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's it's always funny. It's like when I, people, oh, you play with Marshall Falk. You must have got a sore arm handing off. Like, yeah, you know, we did hand off. He was pretty fun to watch. I got fined for not carrying out my fakes. You know, sometimes I like to watch him uh, uh, run the ball. But you know, we, we put it up quite a bit. And it was dependent on that. If, if we can't throw the ball, then Marshall doesn't get that pressure up front, uh, eight-man fronts, uh, to mm -hmm. be successful. I mean, he was going to be a successful because he's damn good. But you have to have a whole offense. And, and, and running that offense and knowing that uh, was awesome. Um, I mean, to be able to go out and run that offense with three receivers, uh, running backs in motion, and it was a quick, you know, it was almost like a triangle offense where you you read this to throw here. And you had the guys on, on the offensive line that did a great job uh, protecting me, giving me time to throw as a five foot 11 and three quarter quarterback. It's hard to see through bodies. Uh, so you had to trust your instincts and your knowledge and the guys are going to be in the right spot. And uh, I was blessed to somehow have that ability to do that with a bunch of gifted athletes. Man, you talk about those athletes, the, the receivers you had around you, man. Uh, and to think that Marshall came out as a running back his freshman year, just took the whole college landscape by storm, right? Yeah, it was, that was what was weird. Is like going, I was going up against uh, another quarterback in camp, and Marshall's second team, and I was second team, and yeah, we kept going down the field and scoring. I'm like, hell, man, I'm pretty good. You know what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I unfortunately didn't win the starting job right out of camp, uh, but I was able to come in after that, and we went on a well, hell of a run, won six games in a row, I think, are my first six starts. Yeah, and it was like, who the heck is this guy? You know, it's it's it, it was pretty incredible. And then there was another guy behind him, Wayne Pittman who when Marshall broke his ribs, um, he came in and filled in. And that's just a testament to the guys we had, offensive line, the coaches, that, you know, you're a future Hall of Famer goes out for three or four games and we have another true freshman come in and pick up the slack and we keep on rolling. And that's what I was going to say. You guys were so young. All you know, so you, <laughs> when I think back, when I think back on that year, that 91 season, I mean, you're a, you're a sophomore, right? Yeah, I was a redshirt sophomore, so I played a little bit more in 89, uh, okay, yeah. redshirt in 90, and then that 91, yeah, was the first year. But those two guys were uh, freshmen, true freshmen. Darnay was a true freshman. Yeah. Uh, Ray Peterson, I think. He, well, that was Larry Maxey then. But, yeah, we had a, we had a couple older guys in, in, in Ray Rowe and Patrick Rowe. Mm -hmm. um, that supplemented with the younger guys and, and it just uh, they taught him how to play the game and it was good and that's what sort of like I look back at Danny right now and he's a true freshman and he had a lot more experience playing in high school I only played one year in high school uh, of quarterback I was a linebacker and free state or strong safety so I only played one year quarterback and so coming oh. in as a true freshman I was like holy crap these guys are fast <laughs> and they're big and, and you mentioned that when you ran for the end zone and you know, when you're out there with those guys, it, it's a bigger, faster game than you ever, ever can imagine. And being a freshman, it's going to take them a little bit, a little while to acclimate to that position and see how, how that speed goes. But if he has the ability, like Coach Lewis says, to see what he sees and, and translate that to the field, then, you know, he has a good shot. It's just, it's tough to be a true freshman uh, out there playing. That's yeah, awesome. kind of a. I'm sorry, kind of uh, speak to a little bit. You, you mentioned your height, and, you know, Danny's not a really tall guy either. Mm -hmm. 
kind of speak to the difficulties you had being a, a shorter guy playing at the quarterback position. The guys might not have been as quite as big up front as they are now, but they were still pretty big guys in front of you. If they were over six feet tall, I couldn't see over them anyway. So it doesn't matter if they're <laughs> six foot nine or six foot three. Uh, basically, it's, it's what you're taught in practice. It's it's a drop back, and you trust your reads and what you see in defense. I always joke with people, you know, would talk about your height. It's like, yeah, I saw. I think I threw like forty four touchdowns and like twenty interceptions. I go, I probably saw three touchdowns and maybe three of the interceptions because you'd be on the ground and you'd see which which side of the crowd roared. If you're at home, it got loud, you're all right, that's a completion. But you had to trust what you went through in practice. And that's what it comes down to with this offense they have now is you have to be able to execute and trust what you see in practice because no matter how tall you are, you're – I mean, if you see it, you're going to, if you see the guy open, you're going to be late throwing it anyway. Right. So you have to be throwing it before the guy's breaking. You have to trust your reads and what you see pre-snap and the first couple steps off the ball. That's what hurts a lot of quarterbacks is they see this all of a sudden when the, when the line starts and then they freak out where you have to have that ability and that, that trust that you know what you're doing and the guy's going to be where you're going to be uh, throwing the ball. That was something uh, we were talking about with our, our buddy Coach C as far as the receivers and, and the quarterback having to be on that same page. A lot of times, hey, a quarterback throws a pick. Everybody's so quick to just point their finger at the quarterback. Well, you don't, you don't understand what the what the read was, what the <laughs> option was. Like maybe there's miscommunication there. Mm-hmm. Almost 6,000 passing yards. Is that what I see, man? Is that what I see in your career over here at State? And three years, right? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I started. I think the last seven games in '91. All of uh, missed a game or two in '92, and then broke my leg in the third game in '93. So it was. I think I started 21 games. Yeah, yeah, man. Wow, 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 wow. To to to. I think to sum up, if I were to sum up your style of play or who who I think of. You know, when when I think of your days as an Aztec man, I mean, just a gunslinger. It's, it felt like, you know, watching those games, just a gunslinger, just throwing bombs left and right. But to see how, what you did in that short amount of time, not short. I mean, that's 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 a yeah. really good college career, but uh, very impressive, man. Very impressive what, what you were able to do in those years at such a young age, like I said, surrounded with so many great players as well and then you think about what you guys were playing like in that byu for a game for example i mean ty demers defending <laughs> defending heisman winner and you guys were just these young guns just coming out slinging it first yeah. offensive possession in that game and you guys go deep yeah. uh wh- wh- who made that i mean that had to be that was our, that was, it was funny because we had that was our goal they ran a, a sort of a cover two shell cover four shell but they bracketed inside receivers and if our inside receivers ran an out route or a hitch, the safeties came up and got them and it was one-on-one outside. And they, they figured coach Lake figured that out during the, the practice and said, all right, here, you're either going to be able to throw the deep ball. Or we're not going to be able to win <laughs> basically laid on the line. And that week was a uh, sort of like a Santa Ana win, uh, uh, at practice and man balls were going up in the air just fluttering around I was like and they're looking at me like oh god come on you gotta <laughs> you gotta complete some passes here and luckily the wind had stopped and when we uh, came out in front of that sold out crowd at uh, the old Jack Murphy Stadium it was uh, it was pretty exciting and it rolled into next year you know with USC at home and unfortunately we tied them and we ended up losing to Fresno State and Trent Dilfer uh, you know, at the end of 92 to go to the holiday bowl again, you know, at the end of the season, it's just like, Oh, <laughs> I feel so bad for the fans at, at, the, at that time. Cause we, we had, it, we had, it, we had it two years in a row should have gone to the holiday bowl. And it was, it was, it was frustrating. I still look back at that with uh, so a good degree of uh, really bummed out on that for the fans and for the players and the coaches. It was a, uh, we had a, it was fun, but we, we, we came up short and it's sort of a frustrating uh, to look back at it. Although, now, as you get older, you sort of you enjoy what you did and look back at it. It would have been nice to have a couple of rings that up on the shelf uh, <laughs> to uh, so so validate it all. But it hey, you, you don't have to worry about us fans, man. It was still a lot of fun. We all enjoyed ourselves with those games. Yes, we would have liked to have those big victories, but <laughs> I, I was there at most of those games. I was like like Mateo said, he was there for the tie. I was there for the fifty. <laughs> was it fifty one fifty one or fifty two fifty two? I forgot. Yeah, but yeah, was I was there in the stadium either. for that game. Yeah, no overtime back then. That USC game was incredible as well. Just a comeback 
down i think it was like 21 6 or 28 6 or something some of that something to that effect and it was hot usc was all there represented it was a southern california matchup that we've only seen once yeah. since then we were talking with jack holly the the last quarterback who played against usc wearing an s6 uniform yeah, i was at that game <laughs> yeah okay and but man i got that game was just in- incredible let me yeah. ask you this because we interviewed Carlos. I interviewed Carlos uh, mm. Gutierrez, the Aztec warrior. And one thing that we brought up, of course, that he was involved with was those legendary brawls with oh, Miami. Uh, <laughs> but you good. guys, your guys' teams were legendary for, well, come on, let's be real. You guys were fighters, man. You guys were fighters. It was <laughs> Miami. If it wasn't Miami, it was Fresno. <laughs> that Fresno State game in 92, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yep. What's the story behind that Fresno State game? Because I remember watching that fight, that brawl. It was the most wildest thing I ever seen on a football field. I was a little dazed and after that one because I had taken a knee and the guy came in and flattened me. And uh, Mark Kona came in and crested the amidi and cleaned it up for me. But I was a little dazed after that. So I, and you know, you want to fighting in football helmets and throwing fists and stuff like that's not too smart. But you know, I sort of stayed out of it after that because I was a little, uh, a little, little off. But uh, I think it sort of fired us up. Um, you hate to see that type of brawl. I mean, it happened the year before at the end of 91 when Marshall was out, Pitton was out. We had Larry Max as our running back and, again, got light hit. Uh, nowadays, you, you can't touch a quarterback, man. I was getting killed back there. Uh, they mm. loved uh, just coming in high against a 5'11", three-quarter quarterback. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's sort of not – not something I'm real proud of because uh, I was the <laughs> guy that got <laughs> in both of the two of the fights got cleaned. But, uh, you know, those are some good games. And, you know, like you said, looking back against Ty Detmer, then um, Trent Dilford, Lorenzo Neal. Um, it, was, it was it was a lot of talent back in the WAC back in those days. Yeah. And, Big you know, time. it was just uh, there's some great games. And uh, it was great playing at, at Jack Murphy. And, and some of the crowds were just amazing. And that's what I have season tickets down to uh, Snapdragon. And I was actually going to be done this weekend, but it was my wife's 50th birthday, so I couldn't make it down. But my son and I come down to three or four games, going to bring my daughter down for a game. She's a freshman in high school now. Um, But, you know, it's it's awesome to see that stadium. I just hope to see it packed like it was for that BYU (laughs) game, for the USC game, for the Fresno State game. You know, there's nothing like playing in front of a crowd. Uh, that it, I just got the chills thinking about that. I mean, you'll never have that feeling again playing in front of a, a crowd like that. So I'm hoping uh, we can get start getting more people in the crowd in the in the stands and back in the guys. And I'm gonna try to get down there as much as I can uh, from up in the Bay Area. But uh, just, let's get people out there. Echo that. Echo that for sure. <laughs> before before we talk a little bit about this cow game. David, you know, you talk about those days Aztec Nation would represent at the stadium at the old Murph. They'd come out, they'd be loud. Monty Montezuma was running around hyping the crowd up. And, you know, everybody was just, you know, everybody was, was uh, a little sauced up and having a good time yeah. most of the times, right? It was, it was the Murph. Like, and a lot of things went at the Murph that wouldn't be going on at Snapdragon these days. But <laughs> that's what happens when you have a seven o'clock game. Uh, the <laughs> where everybody gets there a little early. And uh, we had to, I can't have to tell the guys my training. I'm like, dude, you guys got to start coming in before the end of the first quarter. You're missing a lot of the game. It's like, <laughs> you know, you're going to have beer after the game. Come on, get, get this game. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Those years yeah. were electric. They, they really were. San Diego football as a whole, whether it's NFL, San Diego State, whatever, those years will always be remembered, whether we have the rings or not. Those are huge, huge years. Tell me about Al Luganville, because as the coach, he was really a spark plug, right? I mean, my father worked in the administration mm-hmm. back when Luganville was actually in the administration. He went from the administration to the actual coaches position which is i mean that's incredibly rare you don't you don't see people come from administration to you know a whistle around their neck and wearing those those coach shorts you know what i mean that just doesn't happen yeah he came from arizona what about him yeah he came Mm -hmm. from arizona state was a defense coordinator they had a hell of a defense up there and uh they had a bunch of guys go to the nfl and i think he sort of came in as administrator knowing all right maybe i'll get a shot in there (laughs) but he gave me a (laughs) shot um you know when mcguire came into senior state basically all the quarterbacks quit and um they needed somebody and they gave me a shot 
Um, he gave me a scholarship. I was going to either go up to University of Idaho or Idaho State, I think it was, or, you know, maybe go to a JC, but he gave me, he gave me a shot and um, I, I can't, I can't thank him enough for that. And, you know, we, he, his whole thing was filled with Murph. He did that. Uh, just sort of, it's just a bummer how things sort of turned out with Dave Lay being fired at the time because we had something going good. Um, you know, it, it was just a, a, a looking back, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at how a lot of the things turned out uh, with yeah. that um, because he did have a, he had something really good going. And, you know, it's a, it was sort of a bummer that I was there his first year and then I was there his last year when he got fired. It's like, okay, maybe I could have done something, you know, a little bit better to maybe not get him fired and maybe he could have done something on his side not to get, you know, it's one of those things. It's like a, a lot of, it was a perfect storm of five years. People got excited and then there's a little bit of a letdown and all of a sudden they fired him. Um, so it's, you know, it's, you got to give coaches some, some time. You got to get some players time now in the NIL time. I mean, you have Deion Sanders just throwing money around, bringing guys in. Is that the way to go? I don't know. Um, it's just a different world and you have to have continuity with your football yeah. team. It's not like the NFL where you bring in guys that have been playing for 10, 20 years or 10, five years, five, 10 years together. You know, it, it's tough for 18, 19, 20 year old kids to come together and just go, okay, learn this offense, go out and play. Um, you have to have continuity through the coaching, through the players. So it, it'll be an interesting, interesting scenario to see how that turns out. Sort of got off topic there, but I think it's you know, <laughs> with, <laughs> with how the coaches are. You know, it's like uh, you know, I, I always, back to Luke and Bill. I, I, I appreciate the the opportunity he gave me. I, I can't say anything anything more than that. Awesome, awesome. So you will be there in berkeley to watch this saturday's game against the bears man they're coming off of a big victory against auburn in yep. auburn in alabama yep. uh how are you feeling about this game man i mean I, we've said it at the beginning i think it's going to be some growing pains we're going to have to endure a little bit that patience with the coaching staff what you're echoing right now as far as that goes and the scheme and all that good stuff. But I mean, what, what are you looking forward to or what are you looking for in this game? I'm looking forward to seeing the Aztecs on the field. I mean, I get a, I get a chill when I come down to the field or I go to different games, seeing that the team on the field and being a part of that. Like I, I'm proud of that. Um, I'm part of the history. I, my son, you know, really wants to go to San Diego state. So hopefully we can get him in there. Um, he's a lefty pitcher. Um, so I have to Let's try go. to work that a little bit, but you know, it's just sort of a <laughs> sense of pride, you know, when you when you're down there. Um, I know Cal is, has a really good running back. Their quarterback's pretty solid. Their team's on the rise. Uh, they've used the you know the jump to the ACC to get some good players in there. So it is going to be tough. Um, it should be a pretty tough environment. I think there's going to be uh, quite a few people up there coming off the win against Auburn. Um, I'm just looking for our team to the penalties cut down the penalties and be efficient go out there and make make decisions and and play a game but whenever i go to a game i i'm rooting my my butt off and uh, i have pride in it and I always wear the aztec uh colors with pride and i'm just excited to be there oh yeah we're excited to have you out there man hopefully hopefully get to see you sometime up there at the game if not i know it's a huge stadium they, they built it on a fault line, I guess. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, yes, they did. Well, they had to, they did some renovations. They had to get some people out of the trees for a while there. Uh, but they <laughs> finally got the renovations done. So hopefully there's no big earthquakes this weekend. Okay. Well, if there is one, <laughs> if, if there is one, it, uh, hopefully it's the Aztecs yeah, scoring absolutely. a touchdown and spiking the ball right in the end zone. Pulling off the upset. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That would be, that'd be nice. Well, David, we really appreciate you joining us, man. This is uh, technically our second time interviewing you. Yeah. That first Snapdragon game where it was 150 oh. degrees there on the blacktop. <laughs> you know, you you toughed it out. You came and joined us there on the blacktop and interviewed with us for a couple minutes there. If, if there is uh, one word for sure, I, I keep thinking gunslinger. I keep thinking just a tough tough ball player back in those days man uh, i appreciate it i had fun yeah we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to see because i know uh mr gutierrez tim gutierrez right was it was your your backup that yeah that 93 season yep i wonder, yep, I wonder, I wonder yep. if we're gonna have to locate 
Yeah, I'd like to locate him too. I have, whenever I come down, I haven't seen him at any of the alumni events. So if, if you get a hold of him, uh, let me know. <laughs> that would be that would be something. I remember yeah. those years very fondly, man. Those were those were the years. Those were the yep. years where fandom was forged. You know what I mean? Yeah. You see, That's you right. see a loss, and you get you get pissed off, and you're like, yeah, okay, absolutely, gotta get him next year. We gotta get him yeah. next year. Those were our formative Aztec years, man. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a good time. Uh, and I know a lot of people had a, had a fun, had a good time. And a lot of guys in my attorney, they, they bought one of the luxury boxes. They're always there. So I always go by and see them when I'm down there. So there's support out there. We just got to get it. Uh, I think we start winning a couple more games and uh, that place will fill up and, and we can relive uh, the excitement of the early 90s and 90s or, or mid 90s, whatever it was. But yeah. Uh, just proud to be an Aztec, and I appreciate you guys having me on. All right, everybody. All right. everybody. David Lowry, thank you for joining us, man. Stay thank safe, you, David. and hopefully we'll see you Saturday. All right, sounds good, guys. See you then. Take All it right, easy. Man. See you. All right, man. Bye. All right, everybody. There oh, you have man. it.